All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Furious video with Fat Phil. And I have an interesting video to do today. I want to talk about Galactic Legends Ray. I want to explore why there isn't as many Galactic Legends Ray in the game as other GLs. And we're going to look at this in terms not only of how long they've been in the game, how expensive they are, and some of those other aspects that kind of bleed into why I think Ray is probably one of the least represented GLs, especially for how long she's been in the game. So make sure you guys like and subscribe, comment down below. Let's dive right into it. So the first thing I want to look at is the order in which Galactic Legends were released. If you're newer to the game, you just came in and there's seven Galactic Legends. But in the beginning, right, in the beginning, CG created our two young lovers, uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren and Rey. They were released at the same time together. So it, and honestly, on release day, Rey was a thousand times better than Kylo. They had to buff Kylo multiple times before he could even compete with Rey. It was, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Then, you know, not, I don't, I don't know how much longer it was after that. It was definitely a couple of months. We got the two grumpy old men, Jedi Master Luke and Sith Eternal. And again, they were released together, like same day, boom, two GLs. And I think like back then there was kind of a beauty to it that you had to pick one or the other. And they were both there, but you had to pick one or the other to go for right away, and the other would kind of go on the back burner. But I think Capital Games kind of wisened up a little bit. They said, you know what? We're going to release Space Jesus next, right? Jedi Master Kenobi came out. It was just by himself. And I think this was much smarter because you think about players, you either invested in Luke or Sith Eternal, right? That you couldn't do both because your resources had to go all into one. Whereas they released Kenobi, and then not too long after that, they released the Hater of Sand, Lord Vader. And there was a couple of months in between them, which gave players the time to get invested in Kenobi. And then, boom, here comes Lord Vader. We've got you got to throw more money if you want to get this GL. Instead of releasing them both together, where you had to make this conscious decision, do one now, and then the other one comes later, you could kind of do them both. Even though it would take the same amount of time really to get them, they're kind of springing it on you and then trying to, you know, do the whole gotcha, right? At least that's the way I always looked at it. They don't make decisions in this game to make them less money, guys. Just realize that. And again, I'm not hating on them. They're a business. That's what they have to do. And then finally, they released Fatter Than Phil, Jabba the Hutt. He hasn't been in the game for a year yet, but again, released him. So we're waiting for that next light side Galactic Legend because you know it's coming, right? Like they're not going to not release another Galactic Legend. They get a, it's a great source of revenue for them. But why is, I want to show you guys some data here. We're going to go over to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes.gg, and I'm going to show you guys why she's, I kind of almost show you here. Let me see if I can get my screen to cooperate. So we're going to look at, where, where is it here? There it is. All right, so I'm going to show you guys my guild first. So this is my guild in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes.gg. So we have 15 Jabba and 18 Rey, and I'm going to explain something here. So... We have the most of Jedi Master Kenobi. We've got a lot of JML and Sith Eternal kind of together. We don't have that. We only have 34 Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, which I thought was interesting. 29 Lord Vader, 18 Rey, 15 Jabba. So our Rey and Jabba numbers are really close to each other, which is really interesting because she's tied for being the oldest galactic legend. So I'll show you guys some more data across the entire game. So you can go to this relic player data under units here. And if you look at, I filtered by gear 13 units, right? So these are relic units. And again, Darth Vader is the most common relic in the game, which makes sense. But I want to scroll down a little bit to find our first galactic legend, which is, where's he at? I know he's down here somewhere. Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. He has, a, there's 136,000 Supreme Leader Kylo Ren's at relics in the game right now. 136,000. You come down here not too long after that, you have 130,000 Jedi Master Luke's and 129,000 Sith Eternals. So there's your three most common galactic legends. And they're all within, you know, you think like 6,000, you know, there's a good bit more Kylos, but overall, you still have roughly the same number. You know, you're getting within that range of, you know, you're, there's not a crazy number, right? So we keep moving down here. And the next most common galactic legend is Jedi Master Kenobi with 107,000. So... Your four most common galactic legends are Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, who I say you guys should farm. Normally farm first. I think we're going to be transitioning away from that. But again, right now, you got Jedi Master Luke, Sith Eternal. Sith Eternal makes sense. He's the easiest, probably the easiest galactic legend to farm after Kylo. And then 
Jedi Master Luke, just so popular with Jedi Knight Luke, leads really well into Jabba, got a lot of good wrecks, so people really like farming him. And then Kenobi was the king of Galactic Legends. After, when he was released as that fifth GL, he was by far and away the greatest. Nobody could compete with Jedi Master Kenobi with how good he was. And even still, some of those Galactic Legends have a much tougher time dealing with Kenobi. And I'll be very interested to see how Jabba compares to Kenobi without the Jabba Kron. I'm really curious to see how that pans out. But anyway, so there's Kenobi at GL number four, even though he's a little bit, you know, a good bit more expensive. And then we come down here and here's Ray. So when I pulled this up, so there are 69,969. <laughs> Guys, it's funny, right? Because we're all immature and it's hilarious. But now there are, you know, 69,969. I love saying that. Ray in the game right now. So even though Ray has been in the game significantly longer than Kenobi and, you know, Jedi Master Luke and even Sith Eternal, there's still, I mean, half as many Rays as there are Supreme Leader Kylo Ren's and they were released together. And that's like a mind blowing number. When you sit down and think about that, there's half as many, even though they were released together. Finally, we're going to move down a little bit to in the 47,000 range. Yep, there it is. There's Lord Vader. So there's 47,000 relic Lord Vaders in the game. And then finally, the least common, which makes sense, is Jabba the Hutt at 18,463. So again, guys, just showing with Lord Vader and Jabba, their numbers make sense as being lower because it's a, their Lord Vader's the most expensive and Jabba's the newest. So, you know, that sort of fits. But you think Lord Vader isn't that far away from being, you know, from Rey, even though he was released, you know, how long after she'd been in the game? So I want to transition back over to the game here. All right. So we're going to go back into the game. And I'm going to kind of show you guys like the last GL farm. And again, you guys know, even in my example, in my farming, she will be the last Galactic Legend I get right now. And that's because, again, I'm going to link this video in the description down below. But all these other characters really tie in well together. And again, I just show you, you know, kind of the process of how they all go. Again, this isn't the exact order. You can do a bunch of different ways. But again, they all kind of tie in together here. And very much so within, I'd say, these guys up here tie really nicely. And these ones die, you know, tie really nicely down here. The one thing I'll say with Ray before I go into some of the other stuff. She doesn't need our King Wampa, guys. You know I had to fit him in here somewhere. He wants Relic 8. He needs you to get this channel to 5,000 subscribers. So make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below, guys. We want to hit 5K. Again, we're growing so much, and I can't thank you all enough for the love and support. So here's the thing with, with Rey. You will get Jedi training Rey, right, at Relic 7 from Jedi Master Luke, and she is a requirement for Rey. She 100% is a nailed-on requirement for Rey. The other thing you'll get towards JTR, if you go for Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, veteran smuggler Han Solo, he's a requirement to even get Je Jedi training Rey. So, you know, there's another way you could say to kind of work towards her. but as a first Galactic Legend, the other reason she doesn't make sense is BB-8. Because BB-8 needs the First Order. You need First Order to get BB-8. And you say, oh, they don't need that much gear. That's very true. And they're not super hard to farm. However, why would you go and build five, like a whole First Order team with some decent gear levels on them just to build Rey when you could just get BB-8 naturally by going for Kylo? Now... The other thing here with Rey, she's got the second worst character, Star Wars character of all time in Rose Deco. The only one I put in a tier worse than Rose is Reva. I want to know what you guys think. Who's like your least favorite character from movies, you know? But I think Rose is just like a step above Reva because at least they had the decency to like make Rose almost non-existent in The Rise of Skywalker. For all of those faults in that movie, taking Rose basically out of it was awesome in my opinion. Um, again, I didn't think this would be as much critiquing the movies as it is, but here we are. Finally, the other thing I'll say with Ray that I think causes people to not farm her as much, right? Again, you don't really, nothing really leads into her. Like these things all lead in really nicely. Again, I'll link that in the video description down below. Same thing here. Like they all just kind of fit, you know, the shoe kind of fits in. You can kind of see how this path works its way. With Ray though, that doesn't really happen because the other things you need for her, right? You need the Radis five star. Just like you need the finalizer five star for Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. But those finalizer wrecks are 
help you get profundity. They help you, you know, there's like Darth Vader in there. But for Rey, like Evan Hawk and Lando's ship are requirements here. And the Evan Hawk, the only way you get Evan Hawk shards is on a 16 energy cantina node. Now, yes, you could say, oh, well, Kylo Ren unmasked, his ship is on a cantina node. Correct, it is. But it's a 10 energy node and not 16. And let me show you guys. I'm going to prove it to you guys because I know people are going to say this. And again, I don't want you guys to think I don't like Ray. I'm going to save my opinion for Ray at the end. So you guys have to stay tuned. But here's the ship for Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. Come down here, 10 energy node. So it's not a like for like. You're going to get this ship much faster than you'll get the Ebon Hawk. The other thing here, whoops, I need to go down here, is you need Lando, young Lando's Falcon, which means you not only need to get him and his ship, which are on a node together, thank goodness. But again, it's a fleet node. It's a heart node, which is not fun. You also need to at least unlock L3, and she's a cantina farm. And it's a 12 energy node, so it's not like you just you have to get her. But again, it's still more work that you have to do. Whereas with the finalizer, a lot of those are first order characters. And then it's bounty hunters, which you need for so many other things. And Darth Vader, like nobody's complaining. Like the Rex just make so much more sense for finalizer to go for than the Raz. I'd also argue that the finalizer is a better fleet. But again, you know, that's up for debate. But what I'd like to cover a little bit is say that I don't want you guys to think that I hate on Rey. I actually think Rey is a fantastic galactic legend. I would argue the AI, right, that she's the best defensive AI from the standpoint, not that she gets the most holds, no, but from the standpoint that the AI plays her probably the best. I would say Lord Vader is up there with her as well. He might be like a step above her in terms of the AI playing defense with them the best because their kits are very simple. It's not like Jedi Master Kenobi where depending who you apply that second damage, you know, damage immunity to can be very important. Jabba, you know, is very like with the rancor eating somebody, if the AI chooses like the wrong person, like what is that? It doesn't help you, right? Like they choose the Galactic Legend and you're like, yes, I have all the characters standing. Sith Eternal, if you don't link the right people, you're going to take a lot more damage. Again, like there's just, there's so many other GLs that I think is the AI doesn't play as well, where Rey, I think the AI plays her really well. She obviously has her flaws. There's some non-galactic legend counters out there. General Skywalker, if you find yourself up with Ben Solo in that squad, Starkiller in GAC is a very, very, very good counter to this team. Again, guys, I'm not saying that she's not good. That's not it at all. I just don't think that there's enough ways that other farms lead into her, and that, in my opinion, she's that one that just right now doesn't fit it just there's nothing really to get you there compared to all these other farms that really lead into each other and that's a shame because she's a really good galactic legend she's not that hard to get in terms of gear and relic materials comparative to some of these other ones but because nothing leads into her you're basically starting from scratch so that's the video guys hopefully you found it interesting of like why really ray is not represented in you know guilds is just she doesn't lead to anything guys that's my opinion on it let me know what your thoughts are down below. As always, smash that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.